All right, so let's have a little fun in this video. You know how sometimes we say to ourselves, like, when am I ever going to use this stuff? So maybe you're studying for the GMAT or the GRE or the SAT and you're learning all of this math and you're wondering, like, what are the real world applications here? Let's take a look at that in this video. Hi, my name is Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate Test Prep, and specifically, in a couple of days, the Belmont Stakes is going to happen. So depending on when you're watching this video, maybe it's already happened. If you're not into horse racing, the Belmont Stakes is a big famous race. It's the third leg of what's called the Triple Crown of horse racing. It's, um, you know, a lot of times horses might have a chance of winning the Triple Crown if they've won the first two races, the Kentucky Der Derby and the Preakness heading into it. So it's a big deal. And we know that in general, um, you know, people bet a lot of money on horse racing and lose a lot of money on horse racing, but what are the probabilities of them winning any of the common bets that people tend to place on horse bets, right, on horse racing? And they are, you can bet on a horse to win, to place, to show, you can bet on the exacta, the trifecta, or the superfecta. So I'll explain what each of those is in the context of probability. So. To make this uh, video applicable to you on whatever test you're studying for, let's remind ourselves of what probability even is. And kind of the simple definition or the simple rule of probability is that the probability of X, the probability of something happening, is the number of favorable outcomes, so whatever we're asked to be kind of solving for, favorable outcomes, um, over the total number of outcomes, right? So, I mean, that's that's pretty much the basic rule. There are other rules of probability that I certainly teach in my lessons, but that's really all we're going to need uh, with a couple of sub rules to solve the probability of winning your bet if you place a bet to win, to place, to show, and so forth. So favorable outcomes over total outcomes. The first is you could bet on a horse to win. And that literally means you say, okay, there's one horse in the race and I want to, I want that horse to win. I think that horse is going to win, right? And so the number of favorable outcomes, how many horses can win? Only one horse can win. Oops, that pen is out of ink. Only one horse can win. So there is one favorable outcome in that case. If you're betting on a horse to win, it must actually win. There's only one horse. Horse. Now, how many total outcomes are there? Well, it depends on how many horses are on the race. And in the Belmont Stakes coming up in a couple of days, they're saying there are going to be 10 horses in the race. Um, there could be scratches. Uh, a lot of times there are more horses, like in the Kentucky Derby, and there's 20 horses. But in the Belmont, there's, there's going to be 10 horses. So the probability of picking your horse to win is 1 out of 10. So that's it. That's pretty simple, pretty basic. You might be saying, saying to yourself, wait a second, but, but the odds of a certain horse winning are better than that. How, how does that work? Odds, the odds makers, right, the people in Las Vegas, take lots of other things into account, like um, a winning record and how they are at certain distances and on certain types of tracks. And so they set the odds for betting purposes separately than pure probability. So some horses may, according to the experts, be stronger and more likely to win. But technically, like if you flip a coin, it's always one out of two chances that you're going to get heads. Here, out of 10 horses, only one can win. The probability of somebody winning is one out of 10. All right, now that we've kind of have that, that foundation laid, let's go through some of the other ones. What is the probability of winning a bet where you pick a horse to place? Place means the horse can finish either first or second. Ah, now we actually get to a second rule of probability, and that is to say, okay, the horse could win first place. We already figured out that's one out of 10, or, and in probability, or means plus, we add those independent probabilities together. One tenth chance of finishing first, or we have another chance. A second chance, one out of 10, of finishing second. Either of those outcomes satisfies what we placed a bet on, and therefore we have a two out of 10, or one out of five chance of winning a place bet. Better odds, better probabilities, right? You don't win as much money because it's better odds, but hey, 
one out of five chance in the case of the Belmont of winning a place to bet. And incidentally, we could also use that rule that simply says, hey, two favorable outcomes out of 10 total outcomes because now we have two outcomes that we want that would satisfy this bet, first or second place. Two favorable outcomes, 10 total outcomes. So even if you didn't remember the, uh, the addition rule for the or situation, um, there you go. All right, how about to show? Show is even better odds for you because it is a bet that the horse you pick will either finish first or plus finish second or plus finish third, right? So now we have a three out of 10 chance of that happening. And again, basic rule of probability, three favorable outcomes, first, second, or third out of 10 total horses, right? So pretty good odds, not necessarily flip a coin odds, but hey, there are people, if you can bat three out of 10 times in Major League Baseball, you can make millions of dollars, right? So, all right, but now let's get to some interesting ones. The exacta, the trifecta, and the superfecta. And this is a situation where if you're going to bet the exacta, that means you are going to pick the horse that finishes first and the horse that finishes second in exactly the right order. So not just, hey, I pick two horses and they happen to finish first or second. You have to say, okay, I want this horse to finish first and then this other horse to finish second in that order. Now we're picking two horses, not just one. So the favorable outcomes situation, or sorry, the total outcome situation changes. Still only one chance out of something that that is going to happen. There's literally only one combination of all the combinations of the 10 horses finishing, you know, bunch of combinations. And in fact, we're gonna see what that is of them finishing the race out of all of those mix and match combinations, only one counts where the winner you picked came first, the horse you picked second came second. And how many is that? And in the denominator, this now bleeds into the world of combinatorics. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but how many horses could actually finish first? 10. There are 10 horses that could finish first. Once that happens, how many could finish second? Only nine could finish second at that point, right? And so this again goes into the world of permutations and combinations, but I'm just telling you the total number of outcomes, the total number of ways that 10 horses can finish first and second in a particular order is 10 times 9 or 90 total ways. So that's it. You have a 1 in 90 chance of picking an exacta. Now, what about a trifecta? So not very good odds, right? What about a trifecta? That kicks it up a notch. That says, not only do I think I know which horse is gonna finish first and second, I also think I know which horse is gonna pick third. And if you pick those in order, the total outcomes, you have one shot out of 10 horses can finish first, times nine can finish second, times eight more can finish third, right? So that's nine times eight, 72, times 10, 720, right? So one out of 720, not very good odds, but Hey, maybe you're a gambler for a trifecta. And if you really want to hit a home run and have you know, go home with lots of money at the racetrack, the superfecta says, I am going to pick the first four finishing horses in order. And the total number of ways that can happen is 10 times 9 times 8 times uh, 7. So I'll cheat here and say, okay, 720 times 7 is 50, 40. So one out of 5,040 chances of getting the superfecta. So if that happens for you, good job. You'll have plenty of spending money for, uh, for graduate or business school. Don't necessarily advocate betting. If you do it, do it legally. I know uh, betting is becoming more legalized online in certain states these days. Uh, that's my little disclaimer. I don't have the stomach for these types of odds, right? I think I'd rather spend my money on you know, a nice dinner out with my family than crumple it up and throw it in the trash can, which is usually what you're doing when you're betting these types of, of odds. But nevertheless, there are some probabilities for you if you're going to uh, participate in that this weekend or even if you're just going to sit back and watch and enjoy the races. Have fun. Hopefully you've learned something here about the probabilities applied 
in real life. So with that, oh, and by the way, if you want to go deeper, I have detailed lessons, comprehensive lessons on probability combinatorics with lots of practice examples and worksheets, and, and it's all at dominatetestprep.com. Check out our a la carte courses. Um, obviously, it's all covered in our comprehensive courses as well. So head on over to dominatetestprep.com. Any questions, post them below. I'll look forward to working with you and helping you dominate your test.